This video is brought to you by FS Academy. FS Academy offers a range of professional tutorial packages for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Each FS Academy package comes with a number of tutorials, as well as a comprehensive manual, which will expand upon the theory of the content covered. The FS Academy series is created and taught by a real-world Airbus A320 captain, so the instruction throughout is both accurate and informed. The entire FS Academy range is on sale throughout the month of August. Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be revisiting an old friend and that is of course the Black Box Simulations Britain Norman Islander. Some of you may recall that we reviewed the very same aircraft here on the channel some months ago. Black Box have been working on and improving the aircraft over that period of time and the Islander is shortly to receive another upgrade bringing the aircraft up to version 2 of the product. Version 2 purports to be a pretty radical overhaul boasting a host of new features including but not limited to a completely redesigned panel, exterior and interior model, new texturing, liveries and variants of the aircraft including civil, military and cargo models of the Islander, new flight dynamics for the aircraft using the sims more recently updated CFD and prop physics, and version 2 of the Islander is also supposed to be a more study level version of the aircraft featuring an accurate electrical and fuel system as well as working circuit breakers. The product also boasts a more realistic sound set matched more accurately now to a real world Islander, as well as many features that we've come to expect, for example opening doors, fully featherable props, ground equipment including chocks, flags and gust locks. So at least according to the promotional material there we're certainly expecting a pretty radical overhaul of the Islander. Of course though the aim of today's video is to see what we actually get with the package and I'll try my best to showcase that to you. We're not going to be carrying out a traditional full review of the aircraft since I've already reviewed the aircraft once. But as we often like to do here on the channel, we're going to try and carry out a fairly comprehensive flight profile and I'll try and demonstrate as much as I can to you as we go. For those of you who did see my first review of the Islander, you may recall that we took the aircraft on a trip through the Shetland Islands from Sumbra over towards the Outer Skerries. I thought it would be interesting for the sake of a comparison to reverse the route today, so we're taking the same aircraft, the British Airways Islander, back towards Sumbra on the return sector. It's pretty mixed weather out in the Shetland Islands today, there's quite a few showers passing through the area so that should make for a fairly interesting flight. And I'll try and throw in a couple of scenarios en route for us as well. So as always I do hope you enjoy the flight, if you do please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. Again not a full review here so we're going to head straight for the cockpit of the aircraft, however we will take a look at a couple of things in a bit more depth towards the end of the video. So welcome back once again to the cockpit of the Black Box Simulations Britain Normand Islander. It's nice to be back in the aircraft, it's been quite some time since we last flew it on the channel. For those who remember it was actually one of the first Microsoft Flight Simulator aircraft add-ons that I reviewed. There's certainly been some pretty big improvements since we last took the aircraft on an outing so we'll talk about those as we go. For now though we're currently on the easterly runway here in the Outer Skerries. Everybody's on board the aircraft. There has been quite a bit of rain passing through the area although it's looking quite nice here at the moment. And as you can see for yourselves there, we've got quite a nice headwind as well here off the easterly runway. So running through our before start checks then, the battery master switch can go on. Parking brake is set. Avionics masters are both off. Throttles are closed. Prop controls are set to fully forward. Same there for the mixture controls. External supply switch can go to external. Fuel pumps are both off. Generators, the same there, both off. The start checks, the fuel selectors will come to the port tank here on the left and the starboard tank here on the right. Fuel pumps can both go on. Fuel pressure looking good there on both the left and the right. Throttles we can crack one tenth of an inch. We'll just go a little bit more there, I find that works better in the black box simulations version of the aircraft. We're we'll starting the right hand engine first and rather unusually just the one magneto for the start here in the Islander. So we've got the starter there on cage, left mag on. Checking that the prop area is clear. You'll notice the texturing there on the spinner is still fairly rough. That was something I noticed during my first review of the aircraft. And there are still some rougher areas on the Islander. Similarly, we'll talk about those as we go. Anyway, all clear there on the right engine. We'll give everyone a shout. Clear prop. Close up the DV window. There's no noise there for the closing of the window itself. But you notice there is an associated sound change. The wind noise has died down quite a bit now. So that's nice to see. There's definitely been some pretty big sound improvements to the aircraft as well. 
Anyway, all good on starting the right, so we'll select the starter to starboard. And we do have a good start there on the right, so the right mag can go on. All pressure is checked, that's up in the green. And we're just feeding some throttle here to get the engine up to 1000 RPM. There's our 1000 RPM, just checking the rest of our temperatures and pressures. Fuel pressure looks good. All pressure again, that's good. All temperatures coming up. And same there for the cylinder head temperature, that's coming up as well. So good start there on the right, we'll do the same on the left. So left mag can go on. Props clear, we'll engage the starter. Yeah, good start there on the left. Right mag can go on. There's our 1000 RPM. And the engine temperatures and pressures looking good. So we'll cage up the starter. And for the external supply switch that can now go back to starter isolate. So two good starts running through the before taxi checks. Fuel pumps are off. And again the fuel pressure looks good. Generators can go on. Vacuum gauge is checked. We'll check our ammeters and voltmeters, so on to the left. Everything looking good. And on to the right. That's checked. Go back to battery. All pressures, once again, are checked. Fuel pressures look good. Avionics masters can go on. Running through our flight instrument check. Showing a heading with about 100 degrees there on the directional gyro. And about the same there on the compass, showing about 110. Just recentering that, that is fully correct. Worth noting that the markings here on the directional gyro I find a bit odd. We've only got markings every 30 degrees. There's no differentiation between 10 and 5 degrees, which is a bit strange. And I would say that the gauges are slightly weaker in the cockpit. They're perfectly readable, of course, and, and they are much improved over the previous version of the product, but. They don't hold up quite to modern standards, I would say. Anyway, directional gyro is checked, altimeter is set. So, flight instruments looking good. On the transponder, we'll go straight through to out since we're already here on the runway. DNS 530 is initialized. Just talk through that. I've already set up a direct two to Sumbra, Echo Golf Papa Bravo. We'll mostly be navigating visually though, we've just got that there as a reference for the DME got the Sumbra VOR tuned up, that's on a frequency of 117.35 and that's visually identified, showing about 36 miles inbound towards Sumbra. The autopilot, we've pre-selected 3,000 foot there for the climb. Maybe that we don't get that high here with the cloud base, we'll just climb to uh, just below the cloud base for our flight today. So avionics are set, flight instruments are checked. The before takeoff checks, passenger notices are on, prop control is set to fully forward. Trims are set to neutral. Flaps will set to takeoff. So we have takeoff indicated and just visually checking. Flaps are set. Fuel pumps can go on. Fuel quantities are checked and again the fuel pressure looks good. Autopilot is off. Peter heat can go on, we'll get the landing lights on there as well. So once again, checking the temperatures and pressures, we'll work our way through a quick run-up. Coming up to 2100 RPM. Overall, the engine sounds have been improved as well. There's 2100, we'll just work our way through a quick mag check here, onto the right, on the right hand engine. Got about a 100 RPM drop, back to both. And onto the left. Same drop there, once again back to both. Same on the left engine. And same drop there, back to both. And lastly, checking the left mag. And once again, the same drop there. And back to both. So we've still got 2100. Temperatures and pressures looking good. We'll cycle the props. And 
And lastly, we'll just check the carb heat. And you can see we do have a drop there, so the carb heat working correctly. Come all the way back to idle on the throttles. Looks as though we're idling around 600 RPM, so that's pretty reasonable. And back up to 1000 RPM. Lastly, just checking the flight controls, so we'll just bring the yoke back up. And we have full up, full down, and neutral, full left, full right, and neutral, and on the rudder, full left, full right, and neutral. So the flight controls have been checked, the run up is complete. And we are now ready to go. Right, so we are now ready to depart. You can see there is a little bit of rain coming through the area again, but visibility is still good. Even with that headwind, the runway here in the outer scares is pretty short, so we'll come off the parking brake, but we'll just hold the aircraft on the tow brakes here as we come up on the power. So, power is set, temperatures and pressures looking good, off the brakes. Just using a little bit of back pressure here on the yoke to keep the pressure off the aircraft's nose wheel. We've got some pretty high terrain on the departure end, so we'll be starting a uh, left gentle banking turn as soon as we're airborne here off the runway. And we are now airborne, so again, just starting that gentle left bank, keeping ourselves away from the high terrain, actually getting a bit bumped around here as well. You may have just managed to spot there the lighthouse that's further out towards the east. Up through 300 feet, so the flaps come up. And we are indicating flaps up. Up through 500 feet, so we'll come back to 25 inches on the manifold pressure and 2500 RPM. So power is set, temperatures and pressures looking good. We're looking for a heading of 235. Got that set already on the heading bug. We can start increasing our angular bank now that we've increased our airspeed. Some fairly low cloud around here today, so we'll probably level off closer to a thousand feet actually. A few issues I have noticed with the gauges that still need fixing up. You can see there's no index there for angular bank. We've already discussed the directional gyro. So there's the outer scary just passing off the left wing. I think we'll just uh, stay on our westerly heading for now, just till we pass through this bank of cloud out on the left. So we'll level the aircraft off around a thousand feet. And we'll just reselect a thousand feet here on the autopilot for later on. Running through the after takeoff checks, flaps are up, auxiliary fuel pumps are off, and the prop RPM is checked, that's the after takeoff check that's complete. Just nudge the throttles up again there slightly. We'll maintain 25 inches, 2500 RPM for now. We'll see if we can't climb a little bit more here, and if we can't, we'll then come back on the power to our cruise power setting. So 
it looks like once we're past this bank of cloud we can climb a little bit higher so we'll just nudge our way up towards at least 1500 feet and we have 1500 feet set so waypoint one was the island of uh, Wolsey or Wolsey I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce that that's just off the left wing currently you can just about make out the northern shore there but it's a bit fenced in with cloud at the moment Nevertheless, we do have the coastline of the uh, the main body of the island there sighted, so we can always follow that out to the south. And again, I think we can stand to climb a little bit further here. We'll get our way up to 2,000 feet. That should have us settled pretty nicely between the two cloud layers here, the lower level cloud and more significant cloud above us. So once we're up at 2,000 feet, we'll level off, we'll get the autopilot to do some of the work for us. Come back to our cruise power setting. Again, a quick check of the T's and P's. So just to show you on the GNS 530 here, if we come out on the range, you can see we've got the main body here of the uh, Shetland Islands. We're just going to track south along that inbound towards Sumbra, showing 34 miles to run now. So levelling the aircraft off at 2,000, we can actually start a turn further back out towards the south. Pretty nicely clear of cloud here now. For the time being that should just about do us on the heading, we've got ourselves pretty nicely trimmed out, we'll just centre up that heading bug. And as I say, we'll get the autopilot in, so we'll go autopilot on, heading and out. Looks like the autopilot's going to want to capture there at 2100 feet. So we'll just come out of altitude here, we're going to vertical speed, get ourselves back down to 2000 feet. And coming back to our cruise power settings, so we'll go for 22 inches, 2300 RPM. That's 2,000 feet. And back into out once again. It doesn't matter if we capture slightly off here, we're not maintaining an IFR clearance today. So we'll just come slightly further south here on our heading. And in terms of a uh, direct track to Sumbra, currently 208, so we can set that on nav 1. Again, planning to navigate visually for the most part today, but just to test out the avionics. Getting a little bit bumped around here, just climbing slightly, but the aircraft correcting. So there's 208. Once again, I'm noticing there's no index there to actually select the precise uh, course which does make it a little bit trickier to set the gauges and one thing that black box simulations did mention currently the uh, DME gauge not working that's an Asobo sim issue they're working around that as we speak anyway nicely established now here in the cruise we'll actually just come out to the uh, south on our heading just to keep ourselves clear of cloud We've got 22 inches manifold pressure 2200 rpm or thereabouts we'll leave the mixtures fully rich since we're only down 2000 feet that's giving us a cruise speed of just below 140 knots currently. Showing 28 miles to run, about 11 minutes. Actually quite nice now, in terms of visibility, a pretty clear run down towards Sumbra by the looks of things. Anyway, I said we'd discuss the aircraft as we go, so we'll briefly run through that now. We'll follow up a little bit more thoroughly towards the uh, end of the video. Pretty much everything has been overhauled in the Islander, which is really nice to see. And I have to say, when I first reviewed the aircraft, I did find plenty to fault with it. I did enjoy the Islander right from the get-go, but it was pretty rough on the texturing. And certainly there was some work that was needed to be done on sounds and gauges. There's a few bugs as well. 
One thing I will say though about Black Box Simulations, they have pretty tirelessly updated the aircraft since I purchased it. There's been multiple updates, this one obviously being a huge overhaul. The main feature of the V2 of the Islander is it's supposed to be a quote-unquote study level version of the aircraft, and so far what I've seen I've really liked. Certainly the systems seem to have been the biggest area of the aircraft that have been overhauled. All of the systems now seem to function, I haven't really found too much yet that I couldn't click on. I haven't flown the Trilander, but many people speak very highly of the Trilander in terms of systems modelling. I believe as well the Trilander will actually model engine failure. But certainly in terms of systems, again a big overhaul, you can see pretty much everything is now clickable in the cockpit, including the circuit breakers, for example, we can pull an associated circuit breaker here, and we will have the associated systems function. So just picking one here at random, if we go for the... something that makes sense, we'll go for the GPS. And you can see, sure enough, there we do lose our GNS 530. No random failures as far as I'm aware with the circuit breakers and the systems, but nonetheless really nice to see. So again, overall, obviously there has been a fairly comprehensive overhaul of the uh, Islander in terms of systems. Just in terms of our navigation, we're actually currently coming up on the uh, town of Lerwick, or Lerwick, I'm not quite sure again how that's pronounced, but that's one of the uh, more major habitations here in the Shetland Islands. So we should have the uh, Lowick Airport, there we go, just out to tar 2 o'clock. So we're pretty much halfway now on our run down towards Sumbra. So as I say, system's definitely quite nice in the island, and not some of the best I've seen in the sim, but certainly on the uh, higher end there in terms of fidelity, particularly with the likes of the circuit breakers being modelled. Graphically, again, certainly a nice improvement. I like what they've done here with the texturing over the combing, that's quite a big improvement on what the aircraft had previously. And overall the aircraft is looking much cleaner, much sharper. Same goes down the back. And externally, again though there are some rough edges, we talked about the uh, textures there on the prop spinner. Overall I do find as well still the texturing on the panel looks a little bit subpar. And externally the repaints, there's a really nice selection of repaints, a very good selection. A lot of breadth and depth to the uh, various airlines. And you do get multiple variants of the aircraft as well which is really great to see. But the repaints they're not 4k by the looks of things, there are some pretty rough edges. A lot of the riveting is in uh, 2D. But again, overall the aircraft is much uh, improved in terms of graphics, and I find it, although it's not up to the likes of Caronado in terms of standards, it is now at an acceptable level, and I can look past some of the uh, rougher edges there, for example the, uh, the lights in terms of enjoying the aircraft. Sounds again, there has been some improvement, and you do get sound change as well with changes in uh, viewpoint, which is nice. Actually, looking directly at the engine there, I find the sounds a little bit better than when we're looking straight ahead. The sounds are a little bit dull and quiet there, perhaps looking straight ahead. But again, overall, a really nice overhaul to the Island Dub. It's always been an aircraft I've enjoyed in the sim, as I mentioned earlier on, but it's nice to see that overhaul and all of that work having been essentially done for free as well. Really happy with that and really pleased to see it. So just coming up on another bank of cloud here, it does look as though we're going to be able to uh, just about maintain visual, just come slightly out to the right on our heading. Showing now 7 minutes to run towards Sumbra, and the plan is just to continue inbound towards Sumbra, we shouldn't need an instrument approach here, I don't think with the cloud cover such that it is, unless there is a shower directly over the field as we have there currently out at our 11 o'clock. We should be able to just make a uh, straight approach. We know the wind's out from the east, so planning on a uh, 09 arrival. In terms of hand flying the aircraft, again, good fun. Actually just in a little bit of sync here currently, so hopefully the autopilot's going to correct that. I wouldn't say that the flight model feels study level per se, it still feels uh, reasonably light on the controls. But nevertheless, I've again always enjoyed the Islander, I think it's an uh, enjoyable aircraft, it's one I really like in the real world. So we do want to turn really back out towards the uh, south here, but a little bit hemmed in with clouds, so we'll just stay tracking out on about a uh, heading of 200 degrees here, just to keep ourselves visual with the terrain. Really just having to pick our way through the weather. Not really an issue though, we're coming back in onto the easterly runway as I say, so if we continue to track slightly out to the uh, right of Sumbra, then we can come in for a straight approach to the east. And that has kept us clear of the cloud here, so we're quite nicely visual now. Looks like we can see the southerly tip of the island. 
Just picking up a little bit of moisture. OAT is uh, just above 10 degrees, so we're good in terms of any icing. We've obviously got that heater heat on already, but we don't need any of the other aircraft uh, the icing systems. Anyway, we'll just continue to track here down the westerly spine of the island. Not too long to run inbound towards Sumbra, as we said, but we'll quickly head outside. Just so you can get a better feel for the uh, modelling and the texturing of the updated Islander. And as usual, we'll come back once we're ready for the approach into Sumbra. So we are just approaching Sumbra, but it's obviously not our day here in the Islander. We've just lost the left-hand engine. You can see that confirmed there by the engine temperatures and pressures. We've lost fuel pressure. So feeding in the rudder, trying to get that ball centred up. Running through our emergency drills, mixtures are set fully rich. So mixtures up, pitch up, and power up. Gear is up, and the flaps are up. To identify the engine, we'll identify our dead leg, i.e. the leg that we don't have any pressure on the rudder pedals. Currently, as I say, I've got full right rudder. Although interesting to note there, full right rudder, well above uh, blue line and the uh, aircraft still not actually quite balanced. So dead leg is the left leg, which means we've got a dead left engine. And again, we can confirm that there looking at the uh, temperatures and pressures. Same goes there for the uh, RPMs. So we've identified left, we've confirmed left and we'll feather the left hand engine. Interesting to try feathering the engine since when I first reviewed the aircraft that wasn't available on the Islander, but I believe that's since been fixed up. And sure enough, as you can see there, the engine running down and correctly feathered. So that's really nice to see. Here with the engine feathered though, and again, full right rudder, still just slightly out of balance. Interestingly as well, we're showing gyro fail there. Looking at the vacuum gauge, it looks like we should have two sources. I'm not entirely sure whether or not the uh, Islander has a vacuum pump fitted on each engine. I'll try and check that out and let you know at the end of the video. Anyway, plan remains much the same. We're just approaching Sumbra currently, so we'll uh, continue inbound for now just to reduce our workload until we've secured the engine. So the engine is shut down, the mixture can come back to idle cutoff. Fuel selector is off, I actually turned that off just to induce the failure there. We'll get the fuel pump on on the live engine just for a bit of redundancy. And the mags can come off. Fuel quantities do look good get the engine generator off there as well on the left. Almost flying balance now, single engine, full power there, we've got about 105 knots out of the aircraft. And some are actually looking a little bit socked in with some cloud there at the moment. We'll make our way in, see if we can't visually identify the runway. We may have to come back around for the approach. Anyway, we'll just get our downward checks out of the way. Having lost the uh, suction there now, looks like we lost the gyro of course as well, so Autopilot not maintaining heading, we'll take out the autopilot. And again, even with full right rudder there, the aircraft slightly out of balance to fly. Come back on the power, we'll start descending down towards Sumbra. Reducing the workload a bit there as well on the live engine. So getting our downward checks out of the way, brakes are checked and off, undercarriage is down, mixture on the right is rich. Fuel pump is on, fuel quantities are checked. Landing lights are on, flight instruments, they're checked but obviously we've had some failures there with the loss of the uh, vacuum pump. And harness is secure, so our downwind check's complete. 
again planning to make our way in towards uh, runway 09 here, but a little bit tricky to spot currently. Try and use the uh, GNS 530 here, just to help us a little bit in terms of situational awareness. We'll set the 090 radial as well here on the VOR1. If need to be, as I say, we can fly the approach. There's a VOR approach or a LOC approach onto uh, 09. Ideally, though, with these conditions, we don't really want to be doing that. I think we can actually just about visually make out 09 there off our 12 o'clock position, so we're all good in terms of the approach. We'll make a uh, direct approach onto runway 09. Just bring our speed back to 100 knots. We'll keep it at 100 knots, so we don't want to go below blue line. Again, just for the uh, sake of controllability. We'll start feeding in some rudder trim as well now, just to ease up on the uh, the rudder forces for me. And actually, with trim and rudder there, we can keep the aircraft straight. Just going to have to come slightly out to the left of this bank of cloud again, just to maintain visual with the runway. So we can take the flaps whenever we like, but we'll hold off for now. Obviously, single engine here, we're a little bit lacking in power, so we don't really need the extra drag. We've got plenty of runway here at uh, Sumbra, so we don't need to worry too much about our approach speed and configuration. Just having that issue there of getting ourselves onto final with the cloud between us and the runway, but just yeah, coming past that bank of cloud now. Again, just passing into a little bit of rain. Still good on the OAT, about 15 degrees outside now. And nicely visual now with runway 09. Looks like we just about made it in in terms of that weather. A little bit high currently on the Pappy. No concerns there. So just keeping that speed for now around 95 knots. We'll take the flaps once we're sure we're going to make the runway. We're pretty low here on our power setting currently, but again, just keeping that power setting relatively low here on the live engine. Makes the aircraft easier to control and of course as well saves the uh, live engine a little bit of work. So come into the Pappy now. Go to take off flap. And I think we'll just use take off flap for the landing. That's checked. Running through our landing checks, pitch is full fine, undercarriage is down, flaps are set. Landing clearance not required. Runway is clear, just passing into a little bit of weather here as we come on to final. And just keeping that speed above blue line until we come overhead the runway. So not a particularly nice day here in Sumber either, but the wind is straight down the runway, so it should make for a fairly straightforward landing. Oh, loads of sink there at the end as we come over the threshold. Having to ram the throttle forward. Back off the throttle now, holding the Islander off the runway. There's touchdown. And having to feed in a bootful of left rudder there as well now with that rudder trim. By no means a perfect landing, but not too bad considering we were engine out there.
So just coming in towards the apron, looks like we've got a marshal here off on our left. We'll uh, park up using their guidance. Hang lights can go off. Running through the after lane checks, fuel pumps are off, flaps can come up. And the pitot heat is off. That's the after lane checks complete. Another British Airways Islander there, just off the nose. And there's our marshaller, so we'll just, as I say, use their guidance to come in towards the parking area. Onto the brakes, part brake can go on. Again, just leaving the uh, live engine there idling around 1000 RPM. The before shutdown checks, Avionix Masters are off. External lights are set. We'll leave the beacon and the nav lights on for now. Cabin heat is off. And for the shutdown checks then, we'll get the mixture back to idle cutoff on the right engine. Yeah, so the run down there now, quite a bit nicer than I recall it being previously. We'll close up the throttles. Max can go off. And we'll get the fuel selector off there as well. Fuel pumps are off, fuel quantities are checked. Beacon can go off. Generator can come off. And we'll get the battery master off. The after shutdown checks then. Fuel selectors are off. Magnetos are off. Generators are off. Battery master switches off, parking brake is set, and that's the shutdown checklist complete. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed another outing in the Black Box Simulations Britain Norman Islander. As I mentioned during my previous review of the product, I am rather a fan of these types of aircraft in the sim, I think they fit in very nicely. And I am rather a fan as well of the Islander in the real world. I think we had a pretty good chance throughout our flight there to discuss the product and hopefully I've managed to demonstrate some of the changes that you'll see as well with version 2. So during the conclusion, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but nevertheless, as usual, just to round off the video, I'll give you my overall thoughts on what I think the update brings. Firstly, as I said during the video itself, hats off to Black Box Simulations for continuing to work on the product. It's always very commendable, of course, when a developer puts out a product and then continues to support it after release, particularly in Microsoft Flight Simulator where we are seeing a lot of changes to the sim over time. So just running through the usual categories, we'll start with the modelling. Overall, it is pretty noticeable that there has been some modelling upgrades to the Islander, and I think the aircraft does look better for it. So externally, I am happy with the level of detail of the Islander. It has been nice to see the improvements there. It's great as well that we now have some basic external equipment, for example, chocks, engine covers, pitot covers. And the same goes internally. I think, generally speaking, the cockpit is modelled quite nicely. I would say a little bit more modelling work could be done there on some of the avionics. The cabin is also fairly spartan, but again, I suspect that's true to life. I would say as far as the texturing goes, there's certainly been some improvements there as well, although still falling a little bit behind the curve compared to many other Microsoft Flight Simulator add-ons. Again, as we discussed during the flight, I do really like the fact that there's an abundance of livery options available for the aircraft. But again, do just bear in mind that they're not the highest resolution liveries that you'll see. Some of the textures can look a little bit rough closer in, and again, a lot of the detailing is 2D as opposed to 3D. Overall, for me, the texturing of the Islander does still feel a little bit more dated than many other products in the sim. The same is true in the cockpit. Once more, it is very obvious that there has been some upgrading to the textures, but I think there is still room for improvement. I think more than anything, the panel just needs a bit more wear and tear. It does have it in certain places, but not in others. And I think for me, as discussed, the gauges do need a little bit more work as well, with some lubber lines or some indexes there, just to make them easier to read and easier to use. It is nice that we also have the Aspen Avionics option, not something that I would make use of personally necessarily, but again, nice to have the choice. I do hope as well we'll see options to integrate the PMS GTN 750 as well as the TDS GTN XI. And it would be nice as well to have the option to remove the GPS unit altogether, make the Islander just that little bit more challenging to fly. Speaking of flying, again the aircraft does have a more up-to-date flight model making use of the CFD and prop physics within the sim. 
In terms of how the aircraft actually felt to fly, I can't say that I noticed any drastic changes. Fairly sensitive on the controls, it did feel as well like I had a pretty direct input between my controls and the aircraft's control services. It did seem to me though that the aircraft behaved a little bit closer to the numbers, certainly since I last checked out the Islander, the climb rate seemed much more reasonable. Certainly though, the Islander is a very easy aircraft to fly, and again, it really just feels like flying a big Cessna 172. In terms of the sounds, again, there are some noticeable improvements, but I do think there's still a little bit more work that could be done. Externally, I think the aircraft sounds pretty nice, and internally it sounded pretty good as well when we were actually facing towards the engine. For my money though, the engine sounds are a little bit muted when looking forward, particularly bearing in mind that I don't use the headphone option within the sim. General aircraft sounds though are much improved, now making use of a full WY sound set. Aircraft controls and switches all seem to generally have associated sounds, and overall the background ambience in the cockpit was much more immersive than when I previously flew the aircraft. Lastly, in terms of the aircraft systems, again the version 2 overhaul of the Islander is supposed to be somewhat of a study level update. I don't know whether or not I would go as far as to call the aircraft study level personally. I would say in terms of the actual controls, everything seemed to be functioning quite correctly there, so that was great to see. It did feel to me though that in terms of the actual systems modelling, i.e. everything going on behind the scenes, Again, the aircraft does boast an accurate electrical system, an accurate fuel system, so there is certainly some depth to the Islander. But as you'll have seen there during the flight, the engine parameters looked to be pretty consistent. There didn't seem to be too much nuance there in terms of the modelling. So as I say, personally, I wouldn't be stamping the Islander with the study level label, but nevertheless, the aircraft does have a nice level of depth to it. Anyway, that just about wraps up my observations of the general upgrade to the Black Box Simulations Britain Norman Islander and version 2 of the aircraft. As we've already said, it is really nice to see the Islander getting some more care and attention. Version 2 is rather a substantial upgrade and it is pretty clear to see that work has been put into the aircraft in various areas. I said as much during my first review of the aircraft, but generally speaking, if you're looking for the most beautiful aircraft currently available in the sim, then the Islander probably isn't going to tick that box for you. But if you are looking for a product that offers up a lot of fun and is certainly a great option for a spot of island hopping, then at least for me, I still think that the Islander is a very enjoyable option. Great to see that the product does now have a little bit more depth. I've been periodically flying the Islander since I purchased it, and I'm sure I'll continue to do so. It is worth mentioning that I did already purchase the product myself, but Black Box Simulations were kind enough to let us take an early access look at version 2. So a very big thank you to them for allowing us to do that, and a very big thank you to all of you for watching the video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. As always, a very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. It is hugely appreciated. I do hope that all of you are having a great day wherever you are. Take really good care and I will see you all again soon.